Hello, and welcome to East Meets West, a show about all things Hellenic League. I'm your host, Rob Davis, and as always, I am joined and ably assisted by Tom Canning of uh, Football in Berkshire and Ryan Butler of Devon Sports. We are streaming live on Facebook over the Football in Berkshire and Devon Sports Facebook pages. And as always, if you want to listen back to the uh, ramblings at a later date, you can hopefully listen to them on the podcast if the tech guy sorts it out. We've had a few issues. He's on his final warning. But, uh, <laughs> but hopefully that will be available for you shortly after the show. Uh, coming up, we're going to round up all the Hellenic and FA base action from the weekend and the past week. And look ahead to the FA Cup ties that are coming up tomorrow night and all other Hellenic action. And we round off our 2019-20 team of the season by adding our strikers to the final positions left vacant. So, guys, how have your weeks been? Mine's been good. Mine's been very, very good. Good, mate. Good. Um, Lots of games? No. Yes. No. Sort of. <laughs> little bit. Well, like you were coming in with something else there, not no, well, I was. I was. I was just going to come in. It just occurred to me when you introduced it there, you, you called it the vase. And I don't know if yeah, I've ever. I always call it the vase until uh, I don't know until I see it written down, and is... then it's the face. Yeah. Is this is this Charvi Chalvi all over again? It is, yeah. <laughs> so FA vase. Yeah. I've no idea. I I presume it's vase, but I could. I, I don't know. I just wanted to. I just wanted to. I wanted to just pull you up yeah. on it. I wanted to pull you up the, on it. In the south, it's got to be vase. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. I say, every time I see it written down, for some reason I say vase. So, yeah, <laughs> I won't write notes next time. That's the, uh, that's the lesson I'm taking from this. Well, makes it worse is before we came on the air, you had been calling it the bars with no exactly. second four. Vindicated at all. there. I'm vindicated. <laughs> You're backing me up. <laughs> that's what that's what it sort of stuck out for me because it, it was it was so weird. Because yeah. we've been saying bars <laughs> for about 15 minutes, and then suddenly the vase came out. So like, what? Exactly. Well, you know, I'm nothing if not inconsistent. So there we go. <laughs> Right, gents, so we've all been to a few football games this week. How have your weeks been in terms of Hellenic League teams viewing? I've seen a lot of Hellenic football, which is <laughs> which is great, really. That's a good thing. Surprising. Yeah. You know, on the Tuesday night, I went and saw uh, Bishop Shreve Westfield. Yep. So it was a good chance to see, you know, a side that was fancied in, in and around Gloucestershire to potentially, you know, crash the party. Um, and then Westfield to... You know, were the the team to catch last year. Um, both sides for me, I felt, were a bit lacking in key areas, and I was really not surprised to then see Westfields lose at the weekend to Binfield, which I, no doubt I imagine you boys will, will talk about at great length. Yeah, um, yeah maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. You know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, Westfields did, did well to win the game on another day. If Bishop Three had a bit more bite about them, they potentially could have got something from it. Um, then on the Wednesday night, I saw a local derby, which everybody loves, Long Levens versus Lydney, um, another good local derby, 2-2 it finished, and you know both sides, I tweeted at the time, would have come away from the game feeling that it was a chance lost to try and win it, but at the same time, you know, probably thought, mm, we were quite fortunate not to lose the game, so um, the scoreline was pretty fair. And then in my uh, FA Vase action on Saturday, um, again, we saw another all side uh, uh, game. We went and saw Fairford versus Lydney. And, you know, I, I think, you know, if, if Jody Bevan and the Fairford boys end up watching this at any point, um, I think they'd probably agree with me that the lineup that they played and, and the mentality of the team were probably a bit too focused on tomorrow night's FA Cup game. So a number of first team players were were on the bench and, and it gave Lydney a sniff and Lydney ultimately um, quite comfortably got through in the end. But a lot of Hellenic football I saw. Do you think Do you think that's a wise thing to be doing at this time of the season? Um, I think it would have been different if it was a league game. You know, if it was a league game on Saturday against Lydney then, you know, they probably would have wanted to back up the Holmer Green game you know, with another win in the league. Not to say they didn't want to win the Vars game but, yeah. You know, I think if you look at the two FA competitions, the prize money involved, um, you know, the massive, I said on commentary to Kelsey at the time, that, you know, it's a massive carrot for Fairford. You know, the last time they got to this stage of the FA Cup was 2007-2008. They've never made it past this round. And you think with the sides that are potentially coming into 
the FA Cup in the next round, that's massive for a club like Fairfield. If they, for example, drew one of the, a fairly big side like Hereford or something around here, um, you know, at, at home, you know, I know with the you, you're, you're talking about with restrictions in place, of course, you're, you're selling out. You're getting yeah. as many people through the door as possible, and you'll probably have to turn people away. And that's just a matter of fact. So. You know, it is a massive carrot for them to be dangled. See, I, I'm thinking just the way the FA Cup goes, I'm thinking it's, of course, it'd be, uh, if they got through, it'd be Hungerford Town away. Yeah. That would be, that would be, that would be it, because then Herring makes a, a playing return to Bullpit Lane. That's uh, that's what I'd be looking out for anyway. Sorry, Rob, you're the one that's supposed yeah. to ask the questions. It's <laughs> all good. Yeah, you're right on the way. But yeah, so obviously coming back to, coming back to the point, you know, it, that, that sort of, you could see it was playing a part in that fixture. So, you know, it, it just shows that the job that everybody has is, is different in, in terms of management and how difficult it can be that you've got to prioritise certain things at certain points. So, um, you know, if they get the result tomorrow night, it's vindicated. It's mm. 100% vindicated. And I think Fairford as a club would have probably taken it because Lydney are a good bunch. You know, they travel well in terms of players and they usually bring a few people to watch as well um they would have stayed after put so much money behind the bar you know Lydney's twitter joke that they've probably put the whole winnings for the round behind Fairford <laughs> bar so if you're Fairford town you're suddenly looking at thinking oh they're actually minor we've lost it because we've made a bit of money yeah <laughs> so well uh before we go uh, into the fa vase in uh, so much detail then uh, maybe we roll it back uh to last week and you said you went to um Bishop's Cleave versus Westfields, both teams lacking a bit of bite. Yes. Um, how, uh, having seen those two teams, like you say, both fairly fancied um, uh, to be competing near the top end of the table, how do you see the uh, title race shaking up at this uh, very, very early stage? I think Binfield are, uh, are certainly the team to to catch this year. I know that you know Westfields probably won't like me saying it, but you know, they just lack that. They weren't streetwise. You know, they have a lot of young players, and you know the older players at the back were were sort of tuned into the game, and the game management was there. But you know, you watch them and you think, you know, I could see sides beating this team. You know, they went unbeaten last year, and and the times we saw them, you know, they look they got beaten one of the 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 um, Hellenic Cups by Bishop's Glee, funny enough. So. You know, we knew that they potentially could, you know, be turned over. But the longer you go without losing, that momentum just, you know, meant that they weren't there to, to be shot at. But this year, you know, on Tuesday night, if Bishop Cleave had a, if Bishop, if Bishop Cleave had the squad that they had last year, i.e. the forward line and someone like Jack Watts, they win that game on Tuesday night because they would have had someone who can put the ball in the back of the net on a consistent basis. And it would have caused Westfield a lot of trouble. And, you know, Bishop's Cleave, the only reason they didn't get anything from the game, sounds ridiculous, I'm about to say it, is because they didn't score a goal. And, you know, they lose 1-0. And, and, you know, on a different day, if they had the players there, they'd win the game 2-1, 3-1, because Westfields were were there to be shot at. Well, that evening, obviously, uh, Binfield stole a little bit of a march on... Uh, um on Westfields, even uh, before coming to the weekend's action. They went to Ardley for their first game of the season and won 4-0. So, a statement in the league following uh, two pretty um, good cup wins that they started their season with. So, I don't think they didn't get out first gear either. Yeah. Which was just like, wow. Yeah. Um, we were talking to, on, on the weekend when we went to Binfield against Westfield, we were talking to uh, Bob Bacon, the uh, chairman there at Binfield, and he said the uh, management team noticed that at the Ardley game, uh, Ardley liked to play out from the back, and uh, they're a team that like to try and play football. So Binfield just pushed everyone forward ten yards and uh, put a lot of pressure on that um, uh, on that team, and eventually got the rewards. And uh, it was four nil and fairly comfortable work uh, on a Tuesday night. But they did that against Totten, didn't they? Yeah, I they did. The time they saying, did. Like, last yeah. week, that's what they were doing. So. You know, clearly to beat Binfield, you do not want to be playing out from the back. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's later proven already, isn't it? Yeah, more or less, uh, that later when we come on to the Westfield game. But before we leave the uh, midweek, 
uh, Tom, you took a step, uh, look at one of the steps. Yeah. The step six sides in, I went uh, last year on Tuesday. Yeah, I went down to uh, the River Moor to watch Woodley United against AFC Aldermaston. Um, it was pretty comfortable for Woodley United. I think it was it, 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 the, sort of the opening ten minutes. I think AFC Aldermaston kind of came out and sort of said, "We'll have a we'll have a go at this." But um, I mean, ultimately, they they didn't really have any answer. Um, Lamin Cisse, who who's Woodley United, he plays on the le- either left wing or or sort of left of a a front three I'm not quite sure how that sits but uh, he w- he was excellent especially in that first half and, and, and did very very well um, he was the one that was most likely to score and did uh, open up the open the scoring in the first half and then um, I, I, oh, I forget which way it went ran, went now I think it was Max Lashock with a with a penalty uh, if I remember rightly or that, that might have been later on anyway it was, it was almost a week ago now so um, <laughs> but uh, yeah it, it was Woodley looked good it was it was a case of, of two teams that had been heavily beaten uh, in their opening game, and it was going to be a, it was almost going to be a case of sort of who who blinked first, and and Aldermaston just you know they've they've got a couple of good players in there. They just they they didn't quite look like uh, they especially in the second half they they didn't have enough of a game plan. They didn't they weren't able to get forward and and cause enough problems. Um, whereas Woodley just kind of carried on and, and, and pushed on um, since that game obviously uh, AFC Aldermaston's game on the weekend just gone was postponed because they had a uh, suspected Covid uh, related thing, there's no suggestion that there was anything uh, in that, I don't even know, if, I don't know who the players and I've no idea if he even played in that game on Tuesday night so there's been no further suggestion of anything going on there so that's uh, um, that seems to have, have kind of just run its course but yeah um it'll be it'll be interesting uh Woodley have got Charvey tomorrow night so um Woodley are now uh, they didn't play at the weekend but they've got Charvey tomorrow night and Charvey have obviously had a tough start to the season themselves so uh, I'm hoping to go to that one and we'll we'll see how that goes mm-hmm. any uh early predictions on where you might see Woodley or Aldermaston ending up this year I don't know I think I think Woodley probably they'll they'll I, I imagine they'll they'll I don't know. It, it'll depend on what sort of team they can get out week to week. But it, you know that they looked fairly strong uh, on uh, on Tuesday night. They've got a couple of lads over from Maidenhead. Um, either I think from the from the youth ranks, they've got a they've got a, a good Maidenhead United connection in there. Um, so they've got a couple of lads from there, and they looked they 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 look youthful. Um, so I think there'll be an inconsistency with that youth. Um, uh, yeah, I'd go as far as to say Woodley, sort of mid-table. I think AFC Aldermaston. I think they may, they may struggle again. But you know, they have got some good players. If they could just find a way of, of, <laughs> of getting the ball in there, it's as simple as, as as Ryan sort of alluded to. You know, if they can get the ball in the net, they've got a chance. But I didn't see much of that on um, on Tuesday night. Yeah, well, another team that uh, could do with getting the ball in the net. Um, is the team I went to see on Tuesday, and that was, of course, I, I went to Flackwell Heath to see Flackwell Heath against Windsor. And I wasn't particularly planning to do this, but I ended up seeing Windsor's first three competitive games of the <laughs> season. So I've got quite a uh, uh, quite an overview of uh, how they're going at the moment. But, um, yeah, that game, we was sort of, seemed like two sides that almost uh, struggled to get started to begin with. The first half that was a bit patchy, but... Um, your, uh, the guy you recommended for um, team of the season, Tom, I believe, Khaled Simo, um, coming up trumps in the first half of the goal midway through. He uh, w- was certainly the brightest spark from Flackwell Heath. Um, but then there was a sin binning in the um, in the uh, Windsor game and, uh, just before half time. The Windsor team, and uh, yeah, from that point, um, uh, Flackwell Heath were very much on top, and Windsor were. Sort of lucky to go in at one nil probably um in the second half wins did improve but it took about an hour before they sort of perked up um and you've mentioned a couple of times now um uh, bill montague who is uh, their new striker and he, he has scored three goals already this season so it's um you can't really be critical of him three goals in four games uh but windsor have scored four goals in those four games and i think he's going to need a little bit of support because he doesn't play as an out and out forward he sort of does a lot of the work of bringing other people in. And he has got some good people around him, um, but uh, some youthful wingers, a lot of speed, and um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of attacking intent in that team, in McNamara and Parchment and Hope and Coles. Um, 
but uh, I think they're going to need to contribute with goals uh, if Windsor are to do anything this season. And uh, yeah, they no one could put the ball in the net in the second half, so uh, they they struggled and they ended up losing one nil. So uh, yeah, a common theme across our uh, <laughs> matches perhaps last midweek. But uh, yeah, Windsor followed that up, of course, with a defeat in the FA uh, Vars to Long Buckby. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure where they're from. I believe United they're Counties of League. Oh, United Counties, of course. Yes. Yeah, I didn't think they were in the Spartan South, but yeah, I wasn't sure where sure where else they could be from there. But yes. So, um, any more for the midweek before we push on to the weekend fixtures? No, uh, that was it for the midweek. I think. Very good. Okay. Well, in that case, I think we'll probably start with probably what I think most will agree is the highlight fixture of the midweek. Uh, sorry, the, the weekend. Um, Binfield against Westfields. Last season's top two. Uh, both heavily fancied to uh, be the top two again this season. Although, having seen how uh, that game went, maybe some other clubs such as Fairford and uh, uh, a couple of others might have their eyes on uh, breaking into that, um, uh, that top couple. But uh, Binfield won 2-0. Uh, Tom and I were both there. How did you see the game, Tom? Um, it, it, General thoughts. It was, uh, well, I mean, I, I, I didn't think that... Um, I didn't think that Binfield would have it as much their own way as they did the previous week. Bear in mind when they, they when the last time I saw them, they played AFC Totten from a division above in the FA Cup, and I, I think I, it's fair to say I was pretty damning of them on here. Um, I, I can't be anywhere near as as um, as negative about Westfields. I thought that, you know they looked solid. They they've got a couple of good players in there. Um, Rob, it was the number eight who I I couldn't quite remember. I can't quite. I was trying to just look up his name, um, and Ooh. I don't know if I've got the team sheet. I did have the team sheet in my pocket, but I don't anymore. Um, so I can't even I can't even look that up. This is this is started well. But I, I, I think I think in truth, um Binfield started sharper, they started quicker, they pressed um they pressed that uh, sort of playing I think I think Westfield's played out of the back once, got punished for it and then decided to go long after that and, and I must say going long didn't work very well either um, but they, they got they, they tried to play the ball out um, and of all players Jamie McClurg sort of kind of leading by example manager um, I it might be doing a, him a massive disservice but I think he's mid 30s ish uh, but he was you know he was pressing from the off and, and he uh, came up with a rare a rare goal um sort of robbed the robbed the goalkeeper and it was a, it was a tad reminiscent of um uh the the game at the weekend when uh, was it the, the Chelsea goalkeeper yeah. um sort of but I only McClure didn't have to run across him to score he just had an open net to put the ball in um but it wasn't massively a surprise i think the only the only thing i would say is that obviously 2-0 looks looks quite good for Bimfield but aside from Westfield's hit in the post, I think Binfield, uh, Binfield could have at least won that 4-0. Um, oh, they yeah. had enough chances. They hit the post themselves. And they had one... Uh, I mean, Pove, Asa Povey scored the second goal, but he could have had a hat-trick. Um, and, you know, it could have been could have been 3, could have been 4-0. Uh, I know there were a few frayed nerves uh, uh, in amongst the, Binfield, uh, amongst the Binfield supporters in the second half because last season Westfield came from 2-0 down in the fight in the closing minutes to, to beat them at home. Um, but it was almost just the, the game had the game had finished. There, were, there was no, you know, the oomph had been sucked out of the game. Within, so I think, I think for the sort of the last half hour, there was there was not a lot going on. And and I, I think the only danger for for Binfield, I think, really, um, in in not winning this league, is is just keeping everybody happy because they had a lot of good players again on the bench, um, and I, th- I think three of whom at least didn't get on. So you know that that and uh, you know everybody looks they'd happy. Get on the pitch. They'd, sorry, yes, they I don't mean they they don't like <laughs> each other. Um, I mean, yeah, they they so so that will be the that will be the the key test of 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 the management team is sort of keeping everybody happy. But like we said last week, there's there's enough games to go around, um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, there'll be enough games this season for everybody to play. But at the moment, I can't really see how you can how you can beat them. Um, they they are they are the the best team I've I've seen so far this season. So, okay. I go along with the majority of that. I would say that um, I was a little bit surprised by the uh, something you said as well, uh, Ryan. The lack of sort of bite from uh, Westfields. I noticed that um, neither of the two strikers who, who uh, scored so much for them last season 
if I just check my notes, um, uh, Richard Reeves Reeves, and Aidan Thomas. Aidan Thomas. Neither of them started. Greaves came on, and it seems that he came on in their uh, previous game as well. Um, but they did lack a little bit yeah. in front of goal. They had periods where they were sort of on, you know, had a bit of pressure on Binfield, but Binfield generally looked fairly sturdy with that and uh, marshalled their yeah. strikers really well. They, I mean, don't forget Westfields did hit the post and uh, came close on another couple of occasions, but you know, I don't think they were without threats, but maybe they're just lacking something in the forward line. I don't know um, if the players are just coming back from injury or what the case is. So, you know, yeah, I, I think Aiden, I think Aidan Thomas is injured. I heard hmm. um, Richard Breeze. I'm not too sure. I think it's just the system they're playing at the minute. Hmm. Um, it's probably more suited for King Badu to play up front yeah. um, with the likes of Emmanuel Bam um, on the wing. You know, offering that support. So. You know, I think that the the formation Westfields have, have played, in particular against Bishop Sleeve, I imagine they've been the same against Binfield, mm. um, where it was mainly the one up top. You know, it's just the way they go about, you know, that at the moment. Yeah. Whether, you know, they bring Richard Greaves back in and go for a more 4 4 2 or, you know, a bit more of a sturdy formation. Only time will tell, really, but, but obviously it is early days. But, you know, yeah. we said sort of last week that. You know, it'd be a good marker for a team like Binfield to lay down to, you know, end that run that Westfields were on the unbeaten run in the league, um, and, and credit to them they've done that. Yeah. The the, the, the the sorry Rob the the Westfields lad I was looking I was thinking of was uh, Umar Bassett. He was the one that seemed to be causing all the problems and looked like he might uh, might might cause a cause a problem uh, for for Binfield, but ultimately they they marshaled him pretty well. Sorry Rob, I cut right across you there. No, all good. Uh, it probably wasn't very uh, interesting anyway. <laughs> I, I, did, I think the, the only the only downside was um, uh, was Jack Broom sending off, which um, yeah. came just a few minutes after he'd been booked, and and uh, I, 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 I he was it was quite far away, so you, you you can't I can't quite I'm not entirely sure what happened. I didn't quite see it with my own eyes, but um, the, the general mood was that it was a bit unnecessary. Mm. I think a bit of retaliation after being fouled. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So, not ideal there, but uh, uh, to finish on the second note, and I did think that Binfield sort of, uh, as the second half went on, got a little bit tense and yeah. like it, you, uh, was a bit nervy around the stadium. Yeah. Uh, but they're... Westfields had come back from a 2 um, 0 deficit in the uh, reverse fi- in the fixture last season. So, maybe that had something to do with it, but, you know. I think now that they've got that game out of the way, yeah, they could uh, really step on. They'll have they'll have far more straightforward games than that now this season. I think that's the that's the big one out of the way. And you know they, they were never going to be able to to kind of play as well as they did. I, I don't I don't think they were never going to be able to do that as well as they did the previous Saturday when I saw them. But I've been lucky enough to to see them two out of the last three games, and and you know there's nothing in there that says they can't they can't go on and do this now. Certainly, well, certainly, I'm sure, certainly I'm sure top Long Levens, uh, Long Levens will be delighted to hear that knowing that uh, <laughs> they host Binfield on Saturday. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the long old trip. You know, there's a lot of things that can be thrown in this league because yeah. you know there are some very big away fair, days. To be fair, and, Long uh, Levens do tend to play better against the better teams. So, you know, they got Tuffley Rovers tomorrow night, which is a game we're looking to do. And you know, Tuffley have started the season, I mean, abysmally. And you know, that is you know, being polite. In a way, you know, they lost to Virginia Water, lost in the bars, still haven't scored a goal at this point. So, you know, Long Levens will they'll, they'll look, make it look real tough if they're going to win tomorrow night. Um, but then they'll, you know, probably play better against Binfield. It just seems to be how Long Levens play. So, yeah, that I mean, that'd be a good game Saturday. Very good game. Very good. So, there were some other non uh, league fixtures. In non-Hellenic League pictures in <laughs> at the weekend. Uh, the FA Vars, um, that got kicked off. Uh, any particular highlights from the first round of fixtures? Well, as I said, we did, uh, we did Fairford Lydney. And, you know, as I said, you know, Fairford probably looked a bit too distracted. But Lydney have, have been very impressive in the two games I've seen of them this week. You know, two tough away fixtures against local rivals. And, you know, they've made themselves hard to break down. Um, you know, made them. Well, they, they've always been a physical side, Lydney, and you know the way they've gone about it. You know, it's the perfect reaction 
after losing to Reading City on the opening day. You mm-hmm. know, having two tough away fixtures like that and saying that you're unbeaten in both advance to the next round of the FA Vars, you know, I think the manager, Rich Keir, can, 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 probably can't be any happier with that, really. Very good. Uh, Tom, were there any uh, particular fixtures that caught your eye over the week? Yeah, weekend? I mean, I must. I've seen I've seen uh, FC Deportivo Galicia play this season. I think they look to me they look like they lacked something up front. So I was a bit surprised that they were able to beat Hollyport one nil. Oh, yeah. um, that that to me was a was a little bit of a shock. But I mean, Wokenham and Embrook are just not beating all before them at the moment uh, beating Ooh. Cheltenham Saracens 3-0 um, Jake White scored again I was just trying to look up how many goals he's already scored this season it's, uh, it's, it's I think it's a I think it's a few um, see how quickly the internet loads he's scored he's scored six goals in three games this season so um, I, th- I think uh, I imagine Risborough will still have have the biggest say in that division, but but Wokingham and Embrook will, will certainly be there. I think as we've as we've previously suggested, but yeah, I think um, I think uh, yeah, the, the Hollyport losing one nil was was a bit of a surprise, I must admit. But also good on Long Crendon for for going out and and beating Eversley in California, um, who are who are no mugs three one. Mm. Yeah, the uh, working game was certainly um, one I mentioned last week because uh, um, I always like the uh, sort of East. Uh, or Div 1 East against Div 1 West. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's sort of uh, interesting to get a say and see where each division is. I think yeah. over the last few seasons, the West has actually probably been a little bit better at the at the top end than the East. Maybe uh, Risborough would have, uh, be the exception to that, but right at the top end, I think the West has probably been a bit better. I think that might be shifting a little bit. Um, I know Cheltenham perhaps aren't maybe title contenders this year um, judging by your review last week Ryan of course you're the uh, uh, well, you're I, mean, that I mean I said that but they started their season two wins from two in the league mm-hmm. um, and you know they've been two very difficult fixtures and you know they've come from behind in, in one in particular so you know they've, they've started the season brightly and, and you know they felt hard done by uh, in the last couple of seasons that they haven't been promoted and you know this year could be you know a good one they've just got to remain consistent. Last year, when they were probably fancy to, you know, challenge Morven for the title and the Herefordshire lot, um, you know, they'd go to the teams that they should be beating and they don't win. And they, that simply can't happen in that sort of division. So if they can avoid form like that, then they should be all right. Yeah. Well, perhaps that leads, uh, lends a little bit more weight then to my theory that uh, the Easter. Uh, Maybe slightly on top of the top uh, at the top end of the uh, in the competition between the two divisions this season. Just one we okay. haven't mentioned in there, Rob, was um, Friday night was Virginia Water Reading City and Reading City yeah. won that one nil. Um, I think that means they will play their tenants Woodley United with Woodley at home in the next round. Is that yes. right? It is correct, yeah. Um, just that, that the reason I just I was looking at that game because like I think we've we've sort of said we sort of feel like Virginia Water are fairly solid. Um, but but perhaps unspectacular, and and if they've lost the game, if, when they've when they've lost, they've only lost by the odd goal, and when they've won, they've only won by the odd goal, which kind of suggests they'll probably be all right this season. I think. Absolutely, yeah. I think uh, yeah. I think like I say, I think they're a decent side, um, uh, Junior Water, and I think Reading are another one that um, very defensively solid. Um, yeah. They look really organised at the back, but have maybe uh, well last season anyway. Certainly, they they struggled for goals a little bit. Um, and perhaps I don't know if that trend's going to continue this year. But again, they I think they drew nil nil on Tuesday night at Burnham, if I uh, remember correctly, and then they uh, won one nil against uh, Virginia Water on Friday. So not uh, banging in the goals, but still, you know, results against decent sides. It so almost, you can't really complain. It almost feels like we need a sort of thirty-five odd game kind of football round robin season to figure all this stuff out doesn't it really exactly yeah it's almost like we're judging it off uh, two pictures <laughs> and haven't quite got the uh, solid conclusions behind us yet yeah uh, away from the Hellenic League slightly but um, related to Red and Sea in a way did you see the Basingstoke score at the weekend yeah so they came up to Slimbridge up this way were 3-0 down at half time McCoy Palmer came on former Red and City man of course he scored two and I think got two assists and they yeah. won the game 6-3. Wow. So we were, we were there at Fairfield and Kelsey's like, he's got his phone out, he's reading the scoreline coming in. And, you know, we're like, wow, Slimbridge freeing up on the opening day. That's mental. <laughs> and then, yeah, over time, it's just, no, nope, this is what's happening. And, 
yeah, um, credit Bakenstake sounds like an absolute yeah. unbelievable game. Um, and what a result to start at Southern League there. I've I've massively enjoyed the way they've dealt with things at Basingstoke this summer. They've they've had all kinds of just rubbish thrown at them. They don't have access. Do they not have access to the ground at the moment? Not there. Correct, they, yeah. They, yeah, they've they've the well, they've sold it from underneath them. I think. So, yeah, yeah, they they were playing. They were playing. Originally, the... the fixture was supposed to be at Basingstoke, but it got yeah. reversed like, yeah. a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, I, so I think they so, that was what it was. Just I in, think in, they're ground sharing still at Winchester, aren't they? No, they're, they're, they're not. No, um, no. In just I'll, I'll quit thirty seconds. I'll, I'll just do thirty seconds on this. It's uh, so they've been. They were the, their historic ground is at the Camrose, which was given to them by uh, great I wanna, stadium. That yeah, great wa- stadium, the Camrose. I want to say I want to say Lord Camrose or someone like that. Uh, and they played there up until very recently, when, as Rob said, it was sold out from under them effectively. Um, as, well, there's probably a bit more to it than that. And I'm sure mm-hmm. Bakers, any Bakers like dispute, isn't it? I think. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. There's, I think there's a, there's a bit more to it than that. But they've yeah. They've... Reading the story, it's it's, you know, it's it's a shame, really. It's a yeah. It's a lovely place to go to to watch a game of football, let alone play it. But they've, you know, they've nice been... main stand, everything like that. It's great. It, it, oh yeah, it's a it's a it's sort of what you'd call a, a proper non-league ground. But Absolutely. the um so that they've got access or are playing or are supposed to be playing at a place called Winklebury, which I think is in Basingstoke, and it's uh, Hampshire FA base i believe that's i think so but that has not that wasn't up quite up to standard by the start of the season which is why they've had a number of reverse fixtures and why they played bournemouth in the fa cup at reading yeah for as much that's my 30 seconds on Basingstoke town there you go but no i've just been thoroughly impressed with the way they've dealt with things and that they uh, good luck to them this season well, before moving on from the weekend's fixtures and talking of goal fest, did you also see the Kidlington development uh, against Langley score? No. Wait, was it game... five all or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Five all indeed, yeah. And not bad for the first game of the season. I think Langley last uh, came into the Div 1 East last year and they were, you know, towards the bottom end of the table. Didn't cause too many problems. No. Uh, didn't perhaps score too many goals either. Seem to have turned the uh, the last point around uh, fairly comprehensively, if judging by this one game again. It's uh, almost yeah. too many goals, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's almost too many. At Kidlington, yeah, and with striker, oh, I'm going to butcher Dean. his surname here, but uh, uh, Papali. That's what Dean I thought. Papali. That was my, that was my yeah, thoughts. Good. Yeah. Okay, Dean Papali got four of the five, so uh, um, you know they may have a goal score there. For, uh, it certainly seems so after one game. So we, perhaps there'll be a fun one to watch this season. You, you're massively in danger at five all of forget of not knowing what the score was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Oh, sorry, I'm just looking at the I'm just looking at last season's league table. They scored 30 goals in the league last season. They scored a sixth of their one goals. sixth of their of their season's goals in that one game. <laughs> yeah. um, although they did look just again looking at they did let in 94. So um, exactly. wow. But, a lot of goals that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Quite comprehensive. I think they yeah, they struggled I've, for numbers last season. Yeah, time. they did a bit. I think only, it was only Abingdon Town who conceded a hundred goals who uh, who oh blimey, they only scored fifteen. We had in the West we had New College Swindon. I don't yeah. know how many they conceded, but they ended the season I think on a hundred and thirty five minus goal difference. Wow. So yeah, tough time. <laughs> I, I just, I just want to just put out there that if it, none of us are, are making any light of any of this whatsoever, we all know how hard no. it is to run these clubs. It's just, you know, ten goals in a game is pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly, might uh, encourage a few people to go through the uh, doors at the yeah. uh, Arbour Park where Langley are now playing. So, uh, having moved from Hollyport's ground last season. Anyway, any more for the uh, um, results that we saw last week? Uh, no, um, I, I don't. I'm not entirely sure of the circumstances of it as well. But I think there's, there's been a couple of incidents of varying degrees um, of nastiness um, yep. that have happened at a couple of games recently. Not not on the pitch. And I think I just I think I speak for everybody when I say if you're going to a game, just behave. You know, we w- we want to be able to go to non-league football. So so. And I'm sure everybody watching this will already know yeah. how to behave at a football match. So maybe it's pointless me really saying it on here, but there we go. We don't need the football league riffraff coming up and spoiling <laughs> our game. Exactly. Yeah. No, I like the way you said coming up. That's that's good. Positive. Uh, yeah. yeah. Very good. So, <laughs> Sorry, don't we? <laughs> so 
Moving on, we are now going to place our final two players into the 2019-20 uh, Hellenic team of the season. We conducted our final poll over the last week, and it's just left my phone, which is brilliant. So uh, I know who the winners are, at least. <laughs> so the uh, two strikers that join our team of the season for this year were Sean Moore of Binfield, who I believe got around 44% of the votes. Yeah. And then he was joined by Brad Martin oh. of Long Lane. Yes. There we go. There we you, go. You not see uh, uh, that vote before then, guys? Well, no, I, I haven't I, seen I, it. I, I knew it was close, but I mean, yes. I'm, I'm delighted because obviously last week after we finished, you know, I said that, um, you know, if it was me just straight picking, it would be Moore and, and Martin as the two. So in my personal opinion, I think the two best strikers have won that there. Um, yeah. You know, our team's going to be formidable because we've got the two best strikers there. I think that just validates your opinions as a pundit, Ryan, really, more than anything. I can just gauge it. I can yeah. just gauge the public. <laughs> you know, Gavin James, I knew he'd come close, but... Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I've got the poll back up now. So, uh, the poll, uh, Sean Moore got 41% of the votes. Uh, Brad Martin, 24%, just edging out Gavin James with 22 So, uh, well done to those two. We now have our complete team of the season. And as promised, I have written it down this week. So, we can just reel off... Um, um, the winners in all their glory. So uh, in goal, we have Charlie York of Reading City. Our full-backs at right-back are Callum Priest from Fairford and Adam Mace from Bishop's Cleeve. Centre-back partnership of Luke Appleton of Windsor and Macaulay Herbert of Tuckley Rovers. Uh, right midfield is uh, Luke Swan from Easington Sports. Left midfield, McCoy Palmer of Reading City, mentioned earlier. Uh, centre midfield partnership of Jamie McClurg, who uh, scored this week, and Jake Parrott of Brimscombe and Thrupp. And then the strikers, as we've just mentioned, Sean Moore of Binfield and Brad Martin of Longleaf. I mean, the goal, the, the, yeah, the goals, mate. The goals we're going to score in that team. <laughs> just have Jake Parrott sitting, just spreading the ball left and right. McCoy Palmer taking on every right back in the world. An interchangeable front four there, really, I mean. <laughs> um, I, I Absolutely. there's no one there from the team who finished top of the league, of course, uh, in West <laughs> That's hey, not great, I, is it? I, I think I nominated four of their players yeah. along the way. Yeah, it's not I nominated my fault they didn't vote. as well, but hey, they're not going to vote and they're not going to get in. So yeah, <sighs> well, you got it. You can't. You know, there's nothing you can do about that, guys. Nothing you can do about it. And, um, uh, I presume we're managing this team, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I might be water boy or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Ryan seems to know what. Ryan seems to be like uh, Jimmy Queen and Mick Gooden of the nineties. <laughs> I was going to say, I think you seem to know what you're talking about more than I do. So I might let you. Uh, I might just be assistant, like uh, Bradley Walsh in um, uh, Mike Bassett, <laughs> and in yeah, soccer as well. Yeah. <laughs> One of our clipboard, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I think. That's all. I'll just like scribble notes on a bit of paper and pass it to people. Assistant to the manager. Yes. <laughs> um, diplomatically, we have five from the east and five from the west. Luke's one from Easington Sports. Oh, beautiful. Other. Uh, non Berkshire or Gloucestershire player. So, congratulations to him. Good, I'll uh, uh, I'll do a graphic. I'll do a graphic. Easington were delighted with that as well, which was uh, it was good to see that. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, they they were delighted to see that they were getting uh, recognition as well. And, yeah, yeah, really got behind it. Space. Yeah, yeah, I'll, um, yeah I'll, very good debut season. So, uh, yeah, I'll do a graphic and we we can share that tomorrow. Very good. Good stuff. All right. Well. Team of the season will be up, um, as Tom says. The IT guy will put the graphic on the uh, on the uh, Twitter feeds, so we can turn our attention to uh, the upcoming fixtures, and most notably, of course, tomorrow night's six FA Cup ties involving uh, Hellenic League sides. Um, I'll let you go first, Ryan, because I think we know um, we've already had a bit of a Binfield love in, and that might be the uh, <laughs> might be one or two uh, many. Yeah, yeah, when we, they, when we, they start um, the season as well as they have, you can understand it, I suppose. Exactly, yeah. So uh, um, I'll let you go first. Uh, I imagine I know which uh, fixture you're going to be focusing on, but uh, any well, the, the two that stand out for us out this way would be Fairfield against Edgware, of course. Um, mm. You know, it's a, a bit, as I said earlier, it's a massive carrot that's being dangled in front of Fairfield, and you know, I'd, nothing would please me more than to see them get a result there uh, against Sholin, Sorry, um, so it'd be a a good result there. There's also um, involving Hellenic side, Cinder for Town versus Royal Wood and Bassett. Yes. You know, I think, you know, if you're Cinder for Town, you're looking at that as a very winnable fixture. But then equally, if you're looking at it as Bassett, I think they're looking at it as a, a winnable fixture. 
Cinderford have a, a young side. It's been well documented by ourselves, and, and you know everyone on social media is, is pointing out that it is young players that that Cinderford have, and you know we've seen it in particular up this way. You know the sides that have the young players, technically they're outstanding, but when it's not going their way, or you know the more mature players, the more experienced players are getting under their skin, it, you know it, it tends to just be about game management and that experience level just overcoming in the end. And also one fixture that I spoke about last week that, you know, is going to be an absolute nightmare is Sirencester Town away at Saltash United, Saltash based uh, by Plymouth. So it's a lovely <laughs> three hour, eight minute drive from Sirencester, uh, mm-hmm. which they're going to then have to do back after the game. So, yeah, I imagine no Sirencester fans will be going up, but if they do, fair play to them. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Tom, uh, anything or, or do you want to speak about the games that I think you're going to speak about now? What was I going to speak about? I... Well, I'd imagine Binfield uh, for the uh, uh, FA Cup fixtures. Oh, tomorrow. any preview uh, notes you, on that? Are you going to that, aren't you? I was going to leave that to you because you're supposed oh, to. Oh, I'm kind of, um, yeah, I'm very tempted to go. It is like a, it's another one that's a fair way away. It's just over an hour, which I guess is, you know, when the draw is regionalised like this, it's reasonable. So, <laughs> do you mean uh, regionalised? Yeah, exactly, yeah. That's uh, yeah. How it's dare not three hours How and eight dare minutes. You? Is it? How dare you do air quotations? No, I think it's valid. I I don't do How air do quote. I don't do air quotes How lightly. How dare you? That, the FA works so hard at making sure that football <laughs> is staying on and doing what they're doing now. Show some respect to those you know men with briefcases that don't know anything about football. Show some bloody respect, Tom. Yeah. Disgusting. <laughs> Oh dear. Westfield's had a well. I've had an even longer. Sorry, Westfield. Finfield have had an even longer journey. Um, uh, for their uh, extra preliminary round fixtures. So, uh, yeah, they were right at the other side of Wiltshire, weren't they? Oh. So, yeah, this is uh, uh, pales into comparison. But, yeah, they're playing uh, uh, White Leaf away, who uh, are in the Isthmian uh, Division 1 South East. And uh, look like they're a reasonable side. They started their um, league campaign at the weekend with a 4-1 away win at Herne Bay. So um, I think they're a... a, a Good outfit in the step above. Uh, so Binfield, even though we've had uh, been excessively complimentary about them so far uh, on the broadcast, and rightly so, uh, I think you know they, they're certainly going to be second favourites going into that. But I think you know they're good enough to spring an upset if uh, if all things go their way. Crazily for us, it's like you know we pride ourselves on doing like the local derbies. So we're not actually doing an FA Cup game tomorrow. We're doing Long Levens toughly. Right. Just cool. because, just for, you know, we, me and Kelsey both live in Gloucester, right in the centre of town. You know, it's the Gloucester derby of uh, Long Levens and, and Tuffley. You know, it's, it's known around here as El Glossico. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a big one. It's the only fixture that I would probably have not done an FA Cup game for. And oh. annoyingly, they've scheduled it at Tuffley, which means it gets played on the Tuesday. Whereas if they had scheduled it to be at Long Levens, like any sane person would have, it would have been played on the Wednesday night, and then I would have had a game Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and would have literally been in heaven. <laughs> so, what could have been better than that? But instead, I've got to selfishly take a Wednesday off in the middle because there's no game. There you go. It's disgusting. Outrageous. Absolutely. How dare they? How dare the Hellenic League do this? After oh. we made this show, how <laughs> Brian King, I hope he's watching, I hope he realises that, you know, around. the fiction. <laughs> Pictures need to come out that are most convenient to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think they should be uh, yeah, yeah, contacting you before they come out. Yeah. And saying that, we're doing Gloucester City versus Hungerford on Saturday. You know, Gloucester's first game in their brand new stadium. So all of our teams are at home in the Hellenic League. Typical. <laughs> Bloody hell. What an joke. This was, this was like the FA Cup when all of our teams were drawn away. <laughs> Can't relate. Absolutely. Never had that problem. Can't relate to that. Plenty <laughs> of home games for the FA Cup. We've all had it tough. We've all had it tough. Um, um, so yeah, before we get off the FA Cup and uh, go on to the other games, uh, so the full six fixtures: we uh, Westfield at home to Worksop Town, Burnham at home to Northwood, in another one that looks uh, fairly tasty. I there. would fancy Burnham for that one. I think North Northwood are hard to break down, but they're very inconsistent. They yeah. have you have you uh, have you seen them this? This season, no, I've seen them this season. I saw them last season. Yeah, I yeah. would. I fancy Burnham for that one. I'm gonna. I put my money yeah, firmly behind that. Burnham on that one. Ooh. Well, uh, you're preempting a question I'm coming to in a minute, but uh, 
the as I've mentioned, there's Whiteleaf against Binfield, uh, Cobham against uh, Step Six Risborough Rangers. The Hellenics only Step Six um, representation still in the competition. So good luck to them. What division um, is Cobham in? The, the combined counties Premier League. Oh, okay. So, step five. So you know. Uh, I think Risborough are, are, are a good side, obviously. We've mentioned them before. So they, yeah, I think they've got a chance there, certainly. They are travelling to Cobham. But, uh, Fairford versus Shuling, like we mentioned, and Cinderford Town against Royal Wood and Bassett. Six Hellenic uh, teams still in the competition. I had to put you on the spot now, gents. How many teams do you think we're uh, going to have uh, still in the competition after Tuesday night? In all honesty, I can't remember any of the fixtures you've just read out. So. <laughs> I think I think I think we'd be good for a fifty percent. I would Brilliant. I would I'd go fifty percent. That's I, how it said, usually works. Yeah, I said it on our podcast on on Saturday um, about the Vars games. I looked at it and thought, you know, the Gloucester sides could probably sneak fifty percent on the six fixtures there. So in the end, we we ended up getting that. So looking at that there, I, I imagine Cinderford will beat Bassett. I think I think Fairford could get something. I mean, it's going to be a good night for Fairford. This could be famous last words, but, you know, I just think the, the way that their season's gone so far, the long trip to Holmer Green, you know, centre-half getting a fractured skull, and then the FA Cup game that, you know, then uh, FA Vars game, sorry, then doesn't go for them. You know, in the last round against Edgware, they, they were cruising and then letting a last-minute equaliser and got taken to penalties. You know, it just seems that it could all be set up for a good history making night for them. I think as you as you said, I think Burnham would be a good bet against Northwood. And I'm also I I generally do think Risborough could get something. Yeah, I think yeah. Risborough could be that could be the shocker shocker there. You know, they've already beaten Long Levens who are a level above. So, you know, with the side they have in place there, nothing nothing sort of saying to me that then that they're just gonna get rolled or anything like that. So, you know, I think Risborough could be one to look out for. I think Benfield will probably win as well. It'll probably be a bit tighter, but I'd, I'd still I still think that, you know, they're, they, they've got players with plenty of step four experience. I think they'll, um, I, I think, I think they'll maybe penalties, but I still think they'll, um, they'll come away from that one with a win. I'm on the leaf. Up the leaf. <laughs> Up the leaf. They're even further east than, uh, um, in, than we are, Adam, uh, right? Yeah. So you know, you know. Been through playing one of our sides at the weekend. I'll get under their skin right now. <laughs> at the, at the level, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure when you're playing like when you're playing like your bassets and things like that, that's fine. <laughs> when you're coming down here, ah, uh, mate, up the leaf, up long level. <laughs> We're going to give Westfields the title, mate. <laughs> Absolutely. Or Fairford, perhaps, even. So, who knows? Uh, but, uh, yes, looking ahead to the weekend's fixtures. One you mentioned there, the Long Levens Binfield. Um, which games are you at this weekend, Ryan? So, as I said, I'm doing Gloucester City versus Hungerford, which of course. you know has uh, interest for, for you guys as well. We'll see seeing how yeah. Hungerford go on, because you know, Hungerford, in their pre-season friendly, seem to be doing all right at the moment. They've signed... Uh, a number of players from from out this way, in particular, James Harding and and Sol Andrew Smith, in particular. Um, Danny Robinson, I think, is a terrific manager. We saw obviously what he did with Thatcham a couple of years ago. And so, last year. Yeah, and and you know, it's just it'll be lovely to, to see how they get on because I think that Gloucester have a reputation in the National League at the moment of being a bit of a money side, throwing a bit of money at it, or oh, the budget's obviously so big or whatever. Having a brand new stadium being built, you know, Gloucester uh, a lot of expectation this season. Whereas I think Hungerford are a side that in nearly will, will slip under the radar slightly, in the sense that you know they aren't a massive fish in that league. But yeah. hey, I, I'm excited to see that one. So weirdly, um, three weeks into the brand new season, I'm still doing a pre-season friendly. Yeah, figure that That's out. Like the odd situation, isn't it? Yeah. Um... Any, I'm supposed there's no games for you coming up this week, is there, Tom? Uh, considering your current circumstances. Yeah, it's um, it'll be a very much a player by ear basis. Uh, I, I mean, I doubt it, but yeah, we, we, we'll see. Um, and I, yeah, no, I've not even looked even that that far ahead to be honest. Um, I just wanted to haul you back because we had some midweek Hellenic fixtures we didn't talk about. Um, of course. 
which we've got uh, Tuesday night. We've got Windsor v Reading, uh, Hollyport, Wokingham and Embrook, and Woodley United, Charvy Sports over this way. Not sure what you've got over. In fact, no, I do know what you, you hey, you've talked about. Toughly long in Levens and 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 some of those. But yeah, there's a, there's a couple of fixtures over this way. Windsor, I Reading, think City Lib- will be good. Lib- Bishops, Cleve as well. I think. Yeah. Happening. Yes, it is. That's that'll yeah. be that'll a couple be of local, a couple of local derbies, which is uh, yeah. always piquing the interest of everyone around here. They're usually very popular games. Mm-hmm. Any um, uh, uh, early predictions for those games? Well, I think Lydney have shown they're going to be hard to beat, um, but Bishop's Sleeve, if they can get it right, they tend to get it right. But then saying that, Lydney have good record mm. in the last two years in the, the local fixtures, so uh, I'm going to sit on the fence and say a nice, nice draw on a Tuesday night. Am I right in thinking it's Reading City Lydney at the weekend as well? You on are Saturday. Right in yes. Um, so yeah, and that, but I think I think Windsor Reading City. I think Windsor need to get something from that game at this point. Um, One game into the season. Oh, I'm confusing with that. I'm getting confused with FA Cup and FA Vars, aren't I? Um, they just need yeah, to, yeah. They, well, they just need to get a bit of confidence. And yeah, obviously, you know, yeah. You know, you don't win games in all competitions. It's all no, you don't. You, so, you don't. You don't. Um, I personally think Reading City will do them. I just yeah. think you know, Reading City. We talk about how last year defensively how, yeah. how good they were, um, and and you know going away to Windsor, you know Simon will know how hard it's going to be for a game, and I think he'll just you know he'll get it right. I reckon. I think the, the for me the most interesting midweek game is Hollyport Wokingham and Embrook. Um, yes. That I think that is the most interesting uh, fixture, non cup fixture this week. Yeah, smells like a draw cool. to me. Yeah. Smells like a draw. Three all. Yeah. Three all yeah, draw. Yeah, I was going to say a, a draw. score draw. A score They've draw. had some pretty yeah. high scoring games between the two clubs. Yeah. Um, especially in that, um, what was it, the su- uh, supplement, not the supplementary cup, the other one that they uh, put in Flood last week. Floodlit. No, the, the one that had the group stage. That oh, the, the subsidiary. Subsid- <laughs> oh, yeah, because there was a spelling mistake in the name. Yeah. Subsidiary. <laughs> subsidiary, cup, yes. That was yeah. it. The subsidiary. The subsidiary cup. Uh, Hollyport and Wokingham were in the same group, I believe. And there was uh, a yeah, number of uh, high scoring games between the two sides. I'm almost glad that I managed to sneak away from uh, not having to give a prediction of Tuffley versus Long Levens there. Yeah, well, you can I, uh, back yourself into the corner there if you want. <laughs> I mean, it's, no one's going to watch it from them, surely. I think Long Levens will win 2 0. And you know, if any any anybody related to Tuffley is watching this game, uh, watching this show, sorry, I expect my phone to be starting to blow up once they hear that. Uh, I do think their local rivals will do them, but you know, Tuffley, as I said, they haven't started particularly well, and you know, they have got a very young side. And I said earlier that you know, sometimes when the youngsters it's not going their way, it's the mature players that you know just have that ability under their skin. You talk about you know Brad Martin. You know, he's in our team of the season. He's the kind of player that, you know, his experience would be be vital on the night, really. So, I'm I'm hoping just for a, a good game of football between two of the the sides that I I watch the most and enjoy the most. Well, Ryan's predicted two games. Um, how about I give you also Shreven and Brimscombe and throw up to throw a quick prediction on, and then I'll oh, get Tom to predict the other two. All games. day Brimscombe, that just yeah. a Brimscombe win. If you're a betting man like I am, Brimscombe to win. There you go. Comprehensive. Uh, Famous uh, last there. words. <laughs> and Tom, the uh, you've already uh, we've already spoken about Windsor Reading, but how about Flackwell Heath, Virginia Water, and Homer Green against Easington Sports? I can see Flackwell Heath, Virginia Water, perhaps being one one all. Okay. Um, depends on how well I think uh, Virginia Water deal with Simo, as you've previously yeah. alluded to. Um, so I think, yeah, I think maybe, maybe I'm I'm sticking with my idea that Virginia Water are solid and and uh, and and, and unspectacular. So I'm going going with one or what was the other one? Uh, uh, Homer Green against Easington Sports. Oh, why have Easington you given me that? Very little, little of that. <laughs> I don't want to leave that last fixture out. So, you know, given um, Ryan three, and so I thought I'd give you three as well. Oh, uh, I mean, I'll go Easington Sports. Surely. Yeah, by a two-one margin, <laughs> <laughs> no idea. No, very little about the two sides, but yeah, mm. Easington seem to be uh, well, <laughs> was certainly last season the further up the league than Homer Green. So, uh, got, oh, I haven't even got the league table up. 
can't it? I mean, I'm not that I can tell anything after two games, but yeah, I mean, the fact you're going to look at the table, to try and Virginia Water a set, Virginia Water a second, so you know, <laughs> you know, you know, Virginia Water that well, two games in, yeah, he's definitely going to win, yeah, yeah, yeah. Easington I've played one game, so and they won it. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. No, that's uh, form for you. So, <laughs> so um, make it sound like we know what we're talking about. I don't exactly. think anybody's under any illusions that. Um... <laughs> yeah, anyone who's got this far into it must know by now. Yeah. So, with a couple of uh, yeah, moving on. Did you want to say something there, Tom? Yeah, you, um, I was just I was just thinking. Um, you were talking about local rivals, Ryan, uh, Tuffley and Longlevs. Are, are there clubs in Gloucester that are as close as like we've got up here? Like you've got Woken and Binfield, Bracknell and Ascot, and I mean, there's barely a couple of miles between all four of them. Have you got clubs of a similar level there? Yeah, like I that? mean, Longlevens and, and Tuffley are probably the closest two mm. of the the six in the Premier. Um, you know, they are literally separated got to be by a couple of miles um you know that you could get one bus from uh the sort of north gloucester down all the way past long Levens's ground into town and you can still end up at tuffley's ground after just being on the same bus like so um i should know i've traveled it enough <laughs> um so yeah they're they're the two local ones you know brimscombe it's more sort of stroud way yeah um they're they're very closest geographically to Shortwood um, in Nailsworth I would say um, and then we have Lydney who are, as everybody knows who makes that trip, it's a long old trip, yeah. completely west um, of, of Gloucestershire that one so they're sort of a bit out of the way and then Fairford are pretty much the opposite end so we then have Cleve who you know that that's just north of Cheltenham so they're scattered around a little bit, but toughly in one level to two, two geographically sort of closest together there. Any big rivalries with uh, between the, uh, those clubs and clubs that aren't necessarily in the league or maybe a division or two higher or lower? Uh, well, I mean, Fairford have a, a rivalry with Bassett and Shrivenham because of location-wise. Yeah, of course. Um, trying to think of other games that have been quite fiery, to be honest. Uh, Bishop's Cleave not really have too much in terms of any rivalry. Long Levens sometimes get into you know, arguments with other teams. I remember vividly a pre-season friendly against Cribs. Long Levens were just that short on numbers. They had to bring their goalkeeper, Kane Winman, on up front for the final 10 minutes. <laughs> and Cribs at one point refused to play because they thought Long Levens were taking the mick. It genuinely uh, <laughs> got free heated on the, on the sidelines. I'd never seen anything like it before in my life. Um, but really, it's just like a family. They all just argue over each other. And then there's me and Kelsey just going around telling everyone we love them. <laughs> we love them. We're here and we love you and we're here to watch you because we love you. As long as you try your hardest, we will still love you. Yeah. Except when you I'm, don't win on a midweek game and, you know, I'm hauling myself here after work. That's when I don't love you. <laughs> Uncle Seven Sports Day, yeah. It's going round. Well, show a bit of love, haven't you? Exactly, yeah. Lovely stuff. Well, um... Before we go, I wanted to get the uh, predictions on the uh, the East meets West games of the weekend. So, uh, as we mentioned, uh, Binfield travelled to Long Lavens and Lydney travelled to Reading City. So, two early season clashes between the East and West. Any both East. Both East. Both East. So, both East. Are you writing Tom, these down? Are you writing these down? Uh, are Reading City playing Lydney on Saturday, don't they? Yeah. Uh, Reading City. Reading City. Uh, uh, home Lydney to Lydney, aren't they? Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, they, played, they, they played each other on the yeah. game, didn't they? Yeah, they uh, did. They're at home to yeah, Lydney. They're, they're playing each other again, yeah. Uh, but it's at Reading City, obviously. I, I, I'd like to think Long Levens could get something against Binfield, but it'll be a tough ask. Um, in reality, I think Binfield will, will win the game. But Long Levens will, will make it close, so I potentially reckon it a 2-1, maybe 3-1 uh, to Binfield there. Um, Reading City, I think, will probably... Again, I think Lydney have, have come on in the last 10 days or so, so it wouldn't surprise me if that one was a, a one or draw, potentially. I, I, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, you're still going to go... I'm going both east, east, yeah. Yeah, both east. Partisan support from... Uh, there's, me trying to give, there's me trying to give a you know, thoughtful... Fair and balanced review. You know, you know, summing it up and you know, giving the benefit of the doubt to Binfield. 
Long Lemons are going to beat Binsfield 4-0, mate. And then <laughs> yeah. next, Monday, <laughs> next Monday, when we're here, and Tom's still, still waiting for his missus to give birth, I can sit and say, I told you so, Brad Martin scored four goals. I earned four quid because of my uh, my sponsorship I've got with him this year. But it doesn't matter because it's worth it. Absolutely. Well, uh, <laughs> that seems like a fairly good point as any to leave. Any more for any more before I sign us off? Uh, that's it. Get me to bed. Get <laughs> <laughs> me to bed. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I had go, um, go, go, down there. just on uh, on Saturday at Binfield, I the the Hellenic League chairman Bob Dawling was there, uh, and I had a good car park chat with him after the game. Um, I'm not sure how much I can reveal because I didn't ask him if I could talk about what he was telling me on uh, on our little show. So I'll just leave it as a little cliffhanger there, and I'll see if he'll let me talk about what he said. Well, uh, absolute yeah. tease. Oh yes, absolute tease. As Ryan mentioned there, we're, we're hoping to be back next week, but um, uh, conditions, you know, pending. Uh, Tom's, uh, yeah, the conditions are slightly out of our control. Yes. Um, Tom, as we mentioned, is uh, soon to become a father. So well, I, it I may was, well... I was Tom? fully expecting uh, Friday, uh, Saturday to be my last game, and now I'm sort of, mm, might go Eating Tuesday. towards the Tuesday night, Might go is Tuesday, it? yeah, might go. Might do Tuesday. Probably won't do. Probably won't do. Sad. She's well, listening. Way, She's I've listening. So I've planned a, an under 18s game for next Monday night. Just, okay. just in case. Just in case. Just in case. Text okay. message during the day saying, "Lance, it's not happening." <laughs> Let's go and watch your under 18s football and chalk up another game. I'll see. I'll see. I'll see how it goes. It may. Maybe we could do it from the from the hospital ward. We'll see. <laughs> work, sure you work at the Royal Barks, you know. Yeah. The hospital very well. I'm very gonna get. I'm gonna get something thrown at me in a minute, so I'll leave it there. With a mask over your face. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, before we sign off, then uh, let everyone know where they can find your stuff. So, uh, uh, Tom, why don't you go first? Uh, you can find everything that we do on www.footballinberkshire.co.uk and at FI Berkshire on Twitter. Um, you don't need us to tell you about Facebook because you're already on there watching this. There you go. And Ryan, same for you. 7 sport at fairly UK, um, at 7 sport on Twitter, um, and we also have 7 underscore sport for the Instagram. Keep getting that weekly reminder to push the Instagram, <laughs> even though I don't use it. <laughs> uh, nothing if not honest. Well done. Well, um, that's it for us. That's our show. So thank you very much for tuning in. Um, all that's left for us to say, I guess, is a goodbye from me, Rob Davis. Goodbye from Tom Canning. Bye. And goodbye from Ryan Butler. Potentially, see you next week. <laughs> Potentially, yeah, you never know.